this here is a, an oral history interview with Rob Rea um, that aims to recall the subcultures to which he belonged back in high school and his experiences at a dance club called Images. While I'm the interviewer here and generally in, attend, intend to let Rob speak about his experiences, um, I was also part of this same community and may reminisce with Rob here and there. Briefly, Images was situated in Brewster, New York. It was active roughly during the late 80s and early 1990s and featured DJs from the local Western Connecticut State University radio station, WXCI. It was a dry club, no alcohol was served, although there was plenty of it um, illegally stored in people's cars in the parking lot. Um, and it attracted what I'll roughly call um, alternative teens from many local towns in the states of New York and Connecticut. These teens were goth, post-punk, hardcore, and much, much more. My name is Samantha Levin, and this interview is taking place on the afternoon of February 7th, 2022, over video call. Hey, Rob. Hi there. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> um, I'm so glad that um, you agreed to do this. Um, this is the first of hopefully many interviews that we can conduct with all the people we knew back then, or maybe we didn't know back then, and are um, we've met since. Um, to create a record of these amazing experiences that we had. Yeah. Um, so I'll first start out with the question, um, where were you born and where did you grow up? Uh, I, was, I was born in a, under weird circumstances. Uh, so my parents were avid skiers, mostly my dad. And so they decided, um, I'm gonna say late sixties to buy some land in Vermont. So they started building a house. And uh, by the time my mom was ready to hatch me. Uh, she was up there alone doing some roofing when uh, her water broke and she just oh. drove herself to the hospital and had a baby. You know, this was like, this is 1973. So I don't know. <laughs> she's, she's just different. Uh, and yeah, my dad got a sandwich when he got home from work and a note saying, Hey, you better go to Vermont. Your son was born. And uh, that's how that happened. But I grew up in Danbury, Connecticut, uh, or I should say I went to school in Danbury, Connecticut. My heart's still in Vermont and probably always will be. Okay. Um, so Connecticut's, I don't know, it's just too busy for me. Not enough trees, I guess. Uh, and actually to see it now in Danbury, like I said, I was there this past weekend. It's just an expanse of residential meh. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's a strange place. It's definitely changed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I didn't miss it back then, and I still don't miss it now. Um, I mm -hmm. still crave to be out someplace where, you know, animals live, and uh, you know, there's a little bit of nature. So, uh, and where? Just the woodsy folk. Where are you now? I'm in Northampton, Mass, uh, right on the edge of sort of town proper, um, but there's plenty of woods, uh, not too far away. Right, right, right. Um, so, how long were you in Vermont, or were you going kind of back and forth between? both back and forth every other weekend at least uh and a lot gotcha. of skiing a lot of snowboarding which was uh, you know i didn't think about it when i was a kid but now i realize what a privilege that was um because I, I i mean even now i crave being out in the snow it's uh something i love um there's a nice flow to it it actually reminds me a lot of dancing uh mm. in that weird way and that's what i liked about uh images not that i was it took me a while to warm up to dancing because you know of course you're thinking <laughs> what do I appear to be doing, uh, to, uh, <laughs> you know, in comparison to what others around me are. But then, you know, the realization of that doesn't matter comes to you eventually and you just sort of let it go. And that's really what dancing is about. So yeah, dancing yeah. and snowboarding for me were an escape or release uh, to sort of get into a mechanical mode. Um, let the lizard brain take over and, and mm -hmm. just let stuff happen. Yeah, yeah, I'll let go. Yeah, I think everyone was just kind of a mush of dancers and, and just feeling the music and getting into the music. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so tell me what, um, as a teenager, what led you to take an interest in our local subcultures, if that's even what attracted you first? Um, what was it the local radio station, um, siblings or friends? You mentioned a friend to me before we started recording. Um, some kind of local venue, et cetera. Um, and what's the range of years that this all took place in? Uh, so I'm gonna start a little earlier. Um, 
so yeah. all during my younger years up until i got to danbury high school i was a, a full-on social reject uh bullied pretty badly and uh you know not liked by many um some of that was due to physical deformities when i was young or at least apparent physical deformities and uh you know just kids are assholes <laughs> so so that sort of carried yeah you know f- through until i got to the point where um i've been going to immaculate for a year and i was asking too many questions in religion class i think and i wound up failing and they said hey you're gonna have to take summer school to do religion i'm like dude i've had enough of that uh, <laughs> so that was uh i think it was 14 maybe it was 14 when i went to the high school and uh i realized at that moment that nobody knew me not one person that i could think of i, I didn't recognize anybody and there was a school of thousands of people so i could just write my own story you know and that whole fake it till you make it thing became a reality <laughs> right at that moment and so i just started hanging out with people that uh also seemed uh different you know which was uh-huh. certainly plenty of metalhead kids uh and yeah. plenty of kids in the food court at uh Embry high mm-hmm. and that was a lot of uh goth crowd a lot of the new wave crowd and right you know found some people who were weird like me yeah it's the best so that's, when you find a weird oh, yeah no, right okay. exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then uh one day um i i met uh bonnie who was uh eventually became my girlfriend and uh bonnie had been going with her sister to images uh we were about 15 at the time and uh as soon as i walked in the door i'm like wait a second my peeps you know this music is ah so rich ah. and wxai certainly was a warm-up for that i mean that yeah. station is still great um yeah but, uh, yeah, it was a wonderful thing to be able to walk into a place where, you know, you didn't have to know people to be friends with them. You know, they were, they were just a part of who you were, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And what was Bonnie's last name? Uh, Arevalo, A-R-E-V-A-L-O, Sister Allison. Okay, okay, cool. Um, I don't remember still- either of them, which I hope that they don't remember me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the weird thing about these interviews, right? Um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, that's okay. You know, you need a new <laughs> couple new friends too. Uh, and to be honest, I, I'm sure that, uh, I mean, I could get a, in touch with Bonnie and uh, probably your sister too, if you're yeah. looking for another subject, I'm sure. I'm mostly yeah. sure she'd be cool with that. I would, I would love to interview as many people as I can for this. Yeah. Um, and I think that everyone would really love that, actually. Yeah. Um, so... How would you describe this subculture? Is subculture a good word for you? Like, how do you feel about that? Was it goth, hardcore punk, something totally else? What, what was going on? Right then, for me, it was new wave. Like, goth didn't exist. Okay. Uh, so it was like new wave music. And uh, right, right. That, that, was the, that was the moniker I remember. And then I started hearing industrial music. And I was like, oh, this is neat. You know, it's like pre-techno, very gritty, you know, yep. someone smashing something with a hammer kind of stuff. Yep, and yep. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty great. Um, and there was like Euro, just generally Euro music, you know, mm-hmm. stuff that I just never heard before. Uh, and I, you know, Jeff McKay and whoever else were just slamming those tunes, man. It was totally eye opener for me. Um, so that was a big deal. Uh, and I've lost track of the question, which was, <laughs> oh, just, what do I define the people as? Yeah, our cult, our subculture, um, if, yeah. you, if you slap a label on it. Uh, I just figured it was, uh, so I, I, I monikered myself as a social reject. And so that's sort of what I slapped on everybody else. Cause I'm like, these are my people. Yes. Hello. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not that I talk much at first cause you know, I'm shy. Uh, didn't really know if I'd be cast out from something I wanted to be a part of so big, um, right, but right. worked out. Okay. Yeah. I can very much relate to that. It was just walking in there was immediate acceptance. Um, like it was, it was just a bunch of freaks finding their people because they had to. Um, Yeah. yeah. Um, And you mentioned something else um, going back a little bit before we started recording, you mentioned something about else about wearing the color black. Yeah. 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 Yeah, My mom uh, would pick out my clothes uh, or at least she would, by then she was vetoing clothes Uh, specifically black was never okay because it was satanic because you know, that's how that is, I guess. Uh, I remember this one time I really wanted a Batman shirt, but it was black. Couldn't get it. 
Uh, my mom was big on that. She also was not okay with branding on clothes and mm. um, anything that had, uh, you know, that wasn't in her style, which didn't make mm. a lot of sense. I actually remember when I was young, uh, she she had made me wear this pair of red bell bottoms, which I immediately peed in because I hated them so much. Uh, so that who's got so the power boring. now, Ma? <laughs> <laughs> Guess I can't wear those to school, huh? <laughs> Oh, yeah. It, That's uh, fantastic. I mean, <laughs> you know, my mom was very strong willed and I was too. And that's probably where we got a lot of our conflict from. And we still are, but, you know, it's chilled out. She's older. I'm older. Maybe I'm a little more mature. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if she drove herself to the hospital when she was having contractions, then that's, yeah. that says a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's strange. There were a lot of battles with mom about this stuff. My dad was fairly back burner, but she would certainly would have been, would not have approved of uh, yeah. going to this club if she knew. So I just didn't tell her. Yeah. Yep. That's what happens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so next question. What, what other clubs? Did you just go to Images or um, were there any other clubs you went to? For the most part, yeah, just images and boardwalk. I uh, was there for probably a couple of years, um, but that was that was a generational thing. It just depended on how old you were. Um, yeah, but it was close enough, and it was cheap, and I could get a ride. I mean, that was yeah. the thing. Didn't have a car, so hanging out in the mall food court, begging for quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Once you got, I don't know what it was, like four bucks or whatever it is, uh, and then you could go. You know, it was like it was ridiculous, but uh, that was yeah, the hustle. Yeah. Yeah. And finally get a job, still not got a car, but you know, you could get a ride there. So for sure. It was accessibility. I know a lot of people were going down to Ivy uh towards the later end. Um yep. a lot more hardcore there, if I remember correctly, but uh mm -hmm. never bothered. Um I, never, mm -hmm. I, I guess I really wasn't looking for more, mm -hmm. um, which is the impetus for people to do stuff anyway. If you right, want something, right. you'll do it. Um so yeah. yeah, I just never felt like escaping. And I just want to add some information to our recording here. Boardwalk was what images became after it closed down. They, uh, the owners whose names I'm forgetting right now wanted to expand. So they bought this new arena, called it Boardwalk. Um, and that lasted for a few years. And then um, Ivy called it, right? It was Ivy yeah, yeah, yeah. at one point, Krypton another point, Haven at another point. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I don't remember what town it was in, but it was also in um that area of upstate new york i think the owner's name is john patrillo or something like that he's in that uh in that group As a matter of fact there's your interview subject yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have to interview him that would be fantastic yeah. Yeah. um so um and around what year was this like do you remember when it was that you went to images the first time 1988 i was 15 okay all right, that wasn't too long after when I started going. Yeah, I started going and, and in soon, Yeah, and it was right around the time that recording was taken, that video, um, and plenty of the people in those videos, I, I weirdly recognize them from their dance styles. Uh, yep. Strange, right? <laughs> but that's, yep. How, that's how you know. Yep, yep, yep. And, and the video, what's the name of the person who uploaded the video again? It's... Uh, I had... I had uploaded it, uh, but Sabre had the video and it needed right. some conversion stuff. Okay. Um, Sabra, what's her last name again? Pegler. P -E -G -L -E -R. Pegler. L E R. Okay. I'm sure I'm not saying that right. I'm probably not. <laughs> it's probably like Pellier or something. It sounds it sounds familiar, Sarah uh, um, Sabra Pegler. Yeah. Okay. So Tell me about some of the people who you saw there. You talked about about um, bon, uh, Bonnie and Allison, um, yeah. right? Who else was there? Who did you meet over time? In no particular order, just. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the people that come to mind immediately are um, uh, Jen Covens, uh, who was probably easy to pick out in a crowd if you could see her because she was real short. Great dancer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and uh, Chris McKay, who was Jeff's brother. He was always there because I think he just got a ride from Jeff. Um, yep. <laughs> I liked Chris a lot. He passed away uh, a couple of years ago. Um, Mike Ordicelli was a good friend of mine. He was actually my first friend. Uh, Mike Ordicelli took my fire truck in kindergarten, that son of a bitch. 
Damn it. And, uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so we went to school together for a while. We didn't really talk a ton until uh, he came to Danbury High School. And uh, then, you know, we're close friends. Um, Scott McGee. I mean, I could, I could think of a lot of people if I had enough time. Um, yeah, it might be better if I just give you a list of people I can sure. think of. Uh, <laughs> Jen Daly, who's also gone at this point. Kim, actually Kim Dulka, Kim Greaves, uh, Karen Gross, Toby something, Troy Marino, Brian Fuda, Mike Delisle. Yeah, I got I got names. I got names. <laughs> I was never good with names, but for some reason they're coming up. It's it's weird. I'm terrible with names, and if you asked me now who I used to see, I'd be able to rattle off a few and be like, "Yeah, I mm, can't remember." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Greg Gonzalez, I actually Greg That's... Gonzalez stood out because he was older, but mm -hmm. didn't seem it. You know what I mean? Very youthful, yeah. uh, spirited. You know. Yes. Um, I remember getting a ride home from Steve Marini uh, when he was back on, back from leave in the military. Steve. And, uh, yeah, that was my first experience with marijuana. That was wonderful. <laughs> Did you ever go to his house, to one of his house parties? No, I wish I had. I think I went to a couple, but my memory's a little blurry. I, I was not doing a lot of drugs, but apparently my memory was all over the place. Um, but that house was amazing. Just going to the... Oh, yeah couple of gatherings that I went to yeah. when I was there um yeah so that's something I, I I'm hoping to I'm hoping to interview um everyone yeah. involved in that as well yeah 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 <laughs> yeah I, I was nervous parties always made me nervous too many people in too small of a space some of them yeah. really, um, freaked me out I, I got more comfortable when I was going to college at uh West Con, but it, you know I was after I realized I was too old for clubbing <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> I yep, sort of looked yep, around yep. one day. I'm like, I'm the oldest person here by a lot. This is weird. <laughs> it threw me off. Um, so if you didn't like house parties, you probably don't know about Jim Callahan's place. That was in the middle of Danbury. Did you ever find yourself over there? I think I was in that place after he left because um, okay. it's not Greg Gonzalez. There was another Greg, who lived there afterwards, and it was a party house for sure, a legendary party house. Yeah, no thing was going on at the time, but my corner yeah. still lived there for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people did. I mean, yeah. a lot of people. A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, code wasn't up to any no. sort of fashion. But, there was I mean, a set of French doors that opened up to nothing, and it was yep. on the second floor. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yep. the one. Yeah, yeah. That's cool the one. house. Yep. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, let's talk about more about clothing and style and, um, that kind of thing. Uh, we talked about black clothing, but, and then I saw a picture of you on Facebook the other day, were you all blonde? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, I never really was. It was light brown. I, I was outside okay. a lot. Um, so it sort of lightened, I guess. That's what um, happens when you go snowboarding all the time, I guess, huh? Yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. doing a lot of hiking, uh, you know, just like I said, I like being outside, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And it was free, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, free entertainment. Yeah, clothing was, um, the clothing I was allowed to wear uh, was not what I wanted to wear because I was allowed to wear it, you know? Of course, yeah. you're looking for ways to express yourself. So I would do things like, um, I had this pair of baggy pants that I really liked. They were baggy at the bottoms and I sewed chaps, which I would wear over combat boots. So it'd be like, you know, the, oh, nice. um, almost like pantaloons that the state troopers have, you know, they'd sort of flare out below the knee. Uh, that sort of fit also into my martial arts, uh, interests because, um, you know, it kind of reminded me of, uh, you know, martial arts. So, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I would do that. Um, that was a big, I was a big fan of those pants and the chaps and the combat boots, which of course were duct taped together two years later. Um, <laughs> and uh, one shirt that stood out was sort of a light orange and white, which looked pretty psychedelic under the uh, black lights. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and mom couldn't catch, catch on that that was my club and shirt. So that was a big, you know, I wore that shirt a lot. That's what I, that's what I remember. Uh, black trench coat, of course, because, you know, of course. Who didn't have one of those? 
think like a lot of people think of the long trench coats as being a style of the 90s, but they don't know about us. Yeah, right. <laughs> we brought that in. That's us. We we did that. <laughs> Go yeah, Jenna. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of this is just uh, Salvation Army stuff, you know, like whatever yeah. you can find at the thrift shop, because I never had anybody, you know. <laughs> um, so what about what you saw other people wearing? What did you notice, I guess? What did you think? Oh, the hair, the magical hair. Oh, <laughs> so much hairspray, but. Yep, yep. <laughs> you know, and actually, there were there were a few times where Bonnie would uh, try and do like a flock of seagulls type thing uh, on me, which. You know, kind of worked. It's called. Yeah, yeah, whatever. The, the swoosh. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, that was fine. Uh, but I never really yeah. had the patience or interest in uh, really glamming. You know, that that's just, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it was never really a skill I had. Um, so mm -hmm. it was usually someone else doing that stuff. I never really dyed my hair. I really bothered with tattoos. Um, again, money, I think, had something to do with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was too busy trying to eat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too busy trying to hide away from your mom your mom's policing yeah. 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 yeah yeah um what else what else what kind of things have you kept from that time if anything like you know you, you said you don't remember much about your clothing but like were there any flyers or um who was it that stole the light from the back of the dance floor and oh, someone man. has a piece of the wall yeah, yeah. Um, anything else or photographs? I don't have anything that survived, um, except for I know I have somewhere. I've kept a lot of arts and crafts stuff over the years, and I know I have like an old earring of mine, a couple of beads, but like, you know, <laughs> that doesn't say anything about the place. Um, right, right. Yeah, through the moves and stuff, I don't think anything survived. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I mean, it could be anything that reminds you of like that subculture like it the club kind of brought us together but then we expanded and did other things together we found people who um we had an affinity for um yeah. so so like for example i have a mixtape that brian tracer made for me i still oh, have yeah. it. i can't oh, play wow. it because i'm afraid it's gonna snap but sure. <laughs> actually i do have mixtapes i got a I got a big pile of them and I've been converting them. I've been ripping them to MP3. If uh, if you're interested in one last play, I'll throw to my Sony Walkman and rip it for you. Sure, um, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'll tighten it up first with the pencil, make sure it's not yep. loose and uh, yeah, I'd be happy to do that for you. <laughs> you know? this, yeah. The weird thing about mixtapes for me is that they're, it's not only the the thoughts that were used to make them, but the what was available at the, and popular at the time amongst our crowd. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get a tape, oh, wow, I have a new song, or you, you know, call one on the radio and wait on the pause button to try and try and snatch it, you know, yeah. it, there was an effort put in to, yeah. uh, to sort of curating those, and uh, yeah, they're magical, I guess. Yeah, it. yeah, for sure, and I, um, the, that tape that I just mentioned, I unscrewed it and put um, the logos and photographs from all the bands that were on it as much as I could fit inside. So it's a collage uh, um, from the various magazines like Teen Beat and, yeah. and those kinds of magazines that I've found. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, do you have any pictures of yourself that you can share from that time? Uh, there are three surviving pictures, um, one of which you've seen. Uh, yes. <laughs> the other two are of the same vintage. I can send them to you, although my mouse doesn't work well when I'm on video because they're sharing a USB okay. hub and I got to get a better hub. Um, okay. So after this call, I'll send you the other two that existed. Uh, and, you know, I was always fighting mom on the hair. So my hair was different through different times. Uh, so I think you'll see both stages. Oh. You know, pre and post rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important to have the pre rebellion yeah. and post. Yeah, yeah. you got to see the difference in what happened. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the pre-rebellion was also a, sort of an attempt at skating. I was, I, I really respected skaters. Uh, and I think part of it had to do with that. I was breaking into snowboarding at the time as well, um, which I've been doing since. Uh, but I didn't really have anybody to snowboard with that I hung out with in uh -huh. Connecticut. Um, it was all people up in Vermont that I just randomly knew through my dad's uh, friends. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, in an attempt to try and identify with local kids, I'd try and skate. I always busted myself all the time 
matter of fact, I drove down the hill that I used to skate down. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised I survived. It was <laughs> idiocy. It was idiocy. I'm telling you, it, it's. <laughs> if you ever have a chance to drive down Golden Hill in Danbury, it's like okay. I'm guessing 20 degrees. I mean, it's steep, wow. real steep. And there's a corner at the bottom. Like, what am I thinking? Duh. <laughs> You're not. That's yeah. the point. You're not thinking. <laughs> There's no exactly. planning involved. You just go. Probably... And... But your reflexes work better, or they work yeah. better. And like right. now, like. <laughs> I mean, there's probably still gravel in my elbows. You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> so dumb. So dumb. And no helmets, of course, because why would you wear a helmet? Nobody wears helmets. You helmet. don't do anything, right? Right. <laughs> anyway. Nothing's going to happen. What do you mean? Nah. Nah. Consequences? Please. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so did you... I'm going to ask you a question that wasn't on my list that I sent you. Did you do any drugs or alcohol or, or, or what was your impression of that? Cause images was a, was a dry club, you know, like the, you could get soda there. Um, yeah. you could get soda for free if you just walked behind the counter. Um, yeah. but there was a lot of drug use going on, uh, a lot of alcohol in the parking lot, or did you ever take yeah. part in that? Or, um, were you like me and totally missed it all? I missed a lot. Uh, it, it was weird. I, for the longest time, I was trying to shake that sort of, um, you know, the Lord is watching concept. You know, I just didn't realize that, I, you know, there really, that really didn't exist. And it took me until probably 17 to figure that out. Um, so the impetus wasn't there early on. Um, although, like I said, I got a ride home uh, and I saw a big old sack and we, we tried some and it was the best experience of my life. And that's the only thing that I really got into. Uh, and I've been doing that ever since. So pot, definitely. There you go. Uh, I wasn't much of a drinker back then. I was straight edge uh, when I was skating. So, you know, I wasn't really looking for something to really take me out, yeah. uh, out of my mind. Um, and so, yeah, it worked out okay. Uh, I do now drink, but not yeah. Not heavily, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned two other um, what I'll call communities, affinity groups. I don't know. Um, the straight edge and the skaters. Mm-hmm. There were a lot. There was a lot of that going on, like yeah. possibly connected to the hardcore scene in the area. Yeah, totally. Yep. Yeah. Did you ever go to the Anthrax at all, or did you totally miss out on that? Because I missed no, out. I on missed it. out on that too. Yeah. Because I never had a ride. I never had money. Right. I never had a ride. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I guess you're not doing that. Um, right. <laughs> but my childhood friends, uh, I mean, well, I should say the kids who grew up in the neighborhood around me, I, I'm going to call them childhood friends, I guess. Uh, they were skateboarders and uh, they were straight edge. So that's what was cool. Um, and I didn't realize, I didn't discover acid until later. So that was something else. Um, so yeah, that's just sort of stuck uh, all through Danbury High and uh, through images and boardwalk, just pot, um, right, right. which I guess is fine, whatever. Yeah, yeah it's pretty safe. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so when did you stop going and why? You kind of touched upon that a little bit before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the music had changed, of course, many times. It started out sort of like new wave, uh, industrial, and... Um, it evolved to, by the end of it, it was more techno uh, than anything. Of course, techno had just broken into the scene and wow, dance music, that's awesome. Let's dance. Uh, so there was a lot of that towards the end. And uh, it's a lot more E showing up, um, a lot more just people I didn't know, a lot of young kids coming up from, I'm guessing yeah. like upstate New York, which is probably like Mount Kisco, you know, right. Katona, <laughs> you know. Um, and uh I just realized one day, I was probably 21 at the time, that I was the oldest looking by far. And I didn't really know anybody anymore. You know, yeah, people yeah. who I knew uh, just weren't around. And, you know, yeah. that's kind of, yeah, kind of was the end of the thing, you know? Yeah. I, I certainly went to, um, you know, a couple of places down in the city, Limelight and Tunnel Bar, Crowbar, um, Twilo, <laughs> you know. But oh, it's like, not about Twilo. Yeah, but it was more like a trippy experience and, you know, it's worth doing, but, you know, if you're going to the city, you better bring a hundred bucks and I worked retail, man. 
yeah I, like, yeah I moved out by 17 I was on my own and uh you know yeah. money's for eating <laughs> <laughs> yeah indeed mm-hmm. um I was um when me and friends would go into the city um, before I started going to images, actually, since so it was probably 1987, 88. Oh, wow. So we were young yeah. and we were going oh, yeah. into the city to all these crazy nightclubs to like, oh, why am I blanking on all the names now? There was um, Limelight, but there was also Red Zone, the yeah. building, mm-hmm. um, a whole bunch of them that people our age shouldn't have been going to. We should have been, but you know, <laughs> and they were not goth. They were yeah. more like the the club scene for real. And um, we had this friend, Linda von Rockteschel, who was just gorgeous. What and a great name. yeah, she's um, Thai American. She was adopted, brought um, to the United States with her two brothers. Um, and we would just dress like crazy, and we she would lead us to the front of the line and she just looked like she didn't give a shit and they'd let us all in (laughs) and we'd dance all night. And when I look back on that, these were all congregations, um, clubs that we would go to. um, And one of our friends was hanging out with, um, of course I'm gonna blank on his name, the club kid who got arrested and and sent to jail for murder. I was gonna say, you gotta check out that movie. I know you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Um, total, but a totally different scene. It was just around the same time. And, and yeah, I wound up going to the limelight on, on Tuesday nights for the goth scene. Yeah. And it was just yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's just yeah. amazing. And I, I wish that place could still be a nightclub. Um, I think it's an IHOP now. It's an IHOP. It was a gym for a while. They were, it was a fancy, weird looking mall. Um, it was a restaurant in the back. What a great building. Yeah. The first time I went in there, I'm like, are you serious? This is all for us? <laughs> really? I just couldn't understand how there'd be so many people who were into the kind of stuff that I was, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Magical. Exactly. But then, you know, there's that. And then there's everything about else about New York that I absolutely despise. <laughs> you know, like just subways, yeah. smell of pee constantly, yep. the greasy feeling on your skin. Yep. You know, Gross. I've been here for so long and I'm addicted to it. <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just, you know. It, no, no, I don't. It. It's, it's uh, abusive. Hmm. But here I am. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, so looking back, were are there any, are there any formative experiences that came from that time? I mean, you've, you've brought up some of that, but. Anything else? Like what um, back then has influenced who you are today? Uh, certainly dancing. Um, I, up until that point, uh, up until the point I walked in that door, I thought that I was, um, well, let me start with this. First time I walked in that door, I, before I got there, I've, I sort of had this feeling that I was always going to be different than everyone else by a long shot just because I was weird uh but as soon as I walked in that door I realized aha there are others that are weird and that's great because I'm not the only one and these people understand me you know so that was a big deal um certainly the music was freeing there are times when a song just hits you uh and that was you know true exposure to new music stuff you would never hear on any of the radio stations except for XCI um so that was super freeing and then also just like i mentioned earlier dancing knowing that it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks it's what i'm feeling that matters uh and so being in that zone that personal moment um was wonderful uh especially later on once techno hit uh you know i'd be dancing for like two hours straight um just because it was you know you you got into a trance you really did and i was physically in great shape back then so that wasn't the problem and uh Uh i mean dripping with sweat just drenched but it didn't matter (laughs) and it was wonderful absolutely wonderful that was one of the first moments of freedom that i had um was just dancing constantly 
Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that was great. Also, girls were cute. So, <laughs> <laughs> certainly that's an impetus for many, many things. Yes, yes, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, name name some of the bands. We haven't even uh, named some of the the bands we're talking about. The music. Um, yeah, just roll with it on top of your off the top of your head. You remember? Certainly the Cure, Depeche Mode, and the Smiths. You know, that's sort of like that's where it all started for uh, musical exp exploration. Um, uh, Bonnie was into some pretty cool uh, industrial stuff. Obviously, KMFDM, but like Mitzreb and um, Leibach. And uh, I got a tape from someone uh, with the Deutsche Amerikaner Frumtasch, which was like a hardcore band out of you know Germany. I'm like, who the hell are these guys? I did not understand the word they were saying, but I was like, oh yeah. I kind of get it. I hear it. I feel it. Um, skinny puppy. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a billion, as you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I really liked Rollins. I really liked. Uh, I actually, especially liked Rollins after his music career. Uh, he's quite an inspiring person. Mr. Bungle, I settled on and still listen to. Uh, Jane's Addiction, I still, you know, love listening to their stuff. Um, Ministry is top five for me especially i really like their old old stuff uh they're very depeche mode -y things like, yeah all right, yeah i feel it i feel it um i mean i really i have uh care some people settle on music and listen to it all their lives with certain bands i'm like that um mm -hmm. and certainly mr bongo is up there i really like my bad what can i say um <laughs> i liked uh the sugar cubes Susie and the banshees uh jesus and mary train um uh yeah, there's a lot of bands I'm forgetting. I know. Yeah. I certainly liked Flock of Seagulls. You know, uh, a lot of them don't exist anymore. Yeah, or sure. One Hit Wonders. Sure. Um, you know, like, do you remember the song Edelweiss, which is not oh, at all yeah. goth or new wave or anything? Yeah. I can't remember the name of the artist. Um, but yeah, that was a big part of the scene. Totally, and, and that's that's why that video is so important to me. Uh, it's sort. It, to bring up all these songs i'm like i have not heard this since i was there that day and <laughs> you know you look that stuff up and buy what you can i mean i'm, I'm purchasing old tapes just so i can rip them because it's yep. part of the history it's part of the story you know yeah, um, yeah. i really love that so yeah magic really music has changed quite a bit it's much more formulaic now uh you know they really perfected how to make a catchy tune but yes. there's there's no mistakes it's no spirit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, and a lot of it seems to be, um, I don't know what the best word is to use to describe this, but a lot of the recent music seems to be mimicking new wave and, and synth music from that time, yeah. which I half love. And the other part of me is like, well, why not just listen to the older music? But um, <laughs> I, I'm also really excited to see the enthusiasm for it and the interest mm -hmm. in it continue. Um, and you know, I'm just very curious about that in particular, and yeah. the ages. Of I think people. it's a band called The Weekend. Uh, has a bunch of like '80s kitschy type of sounds to it. Uh, Don't know. My that. daughter was listening to it. I'm like, this is 1980s, isn't it? No, Dad. No. How old is she? Yeah. Uh, she's 13, and okay. so you know, she's of course trying to explore her own musical taste, which is great. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's not what I got, um, but. <laughs> That's important, you know, it's a yeah. part of your formative times. So uh, yeah, it's it's coming around or it already has gone around. I mean, depending on where you are, you're in New York, so it's already gone by now, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but up here where I am, we're probably five years behind, so. <laughs> it's hard to tell, everything's online. And to be honest, I haven't been um, going out to the clubs, not just because of the pandemic, but um, just because I'm old. Um, even though there were people older than, than us, Sure, still sure. DJing, still setting up the club, still finding new venues. Um, sure. So there is an active goth scene in New York City, which is so amazing. That's um, great. Yeah. So I, I try to go whenever I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you still have uh do you still have like a get up, like you know, like the original goth stuff kicking around in the closet somewhere? Or do you do you have you gone it's, new? It's funny, I don't have a lot of the clothing from back then, but I didn't look very goth back then, mm -hmm. um, or at least I don't think I did. Um, 
for similar similar ish reasons that your mom was policing your clothing my mom didn't really understand that kind of dress so she was kind of like why are you wearing that and I kind of she didn't that's not what she sounded like but that's what I heard and I was like and so I would go to school looking gray if if that makes any sense I wore color but Sure, um, sure. I didn't want anyone making comments to me about yeah. what I look like. No risk. Um, what's up? No risk. No risk. Exactly. Yeah. But once I got out, uh, like into my mid twenties and I started, um, a roommate, a, a friend, um, and a roommate was very goth and she's like, Oh, we're going to this goth club called contempt, this goth party called contempt. And that was the beginning of the end. So now I am full on goth like this. Um, I love that, by the way. There's like a haute couture goth now. Um, There's a website called Haute Macabre, and their byline is, it wasn't just a phase. And (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Um, The only reason why my hair is not black is because it was making me go bald. You know, like, (laughs) I'm I'm full on goth now. Um, I wasn't (laughs) back in high school, but I wanted to be, and I couldn't figure out how to be brave enough to do it back then. And now I, now I am. um, Well, it is a personal expression. And that's the thing I admire anybody who, and especially back then, anybody who uh, dyed their hair or did something that was like a very obvious statement of this is how I look. I was, I was proud of them, you know, I wish I had the guts to do that. So yeah, yeah, super cool. As a matter of fact, I tell my daughter, the weird people are the ones you should talk to. Uh, at least so you can understand, you know, yeah. like the, they're, they're the ones that got the stories, you know, there's always something you can learn. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, is there anything else you want to bring up about that time or about the culture itself or? I mean, I'm sure as soon as this is over, I'll think of something cool to say. Yeah. Cause that's, that's how that always is. Uh, no pressure. But, yeah, I, I just I just feel like I had more adventures and more uh, close kinships with people, even people I never met, uh, mm-hmm. at those two places than any place else up until the point where I moved out of the house and I actually had control over, you know, what what I could do with whom and where. Right. Uh, so so that that whole thing was magical for me, and I, I suspect for many many others. Uh, and I can't wait to hear the result of this because <laughs> it's pretty cool. By the way, if you need help, uh, I'd love to help. I would love help because it's, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time and it's overwhelming, um, mm-hmm. mainly because of time constraints, mm-hmm. but also um, tech, like I consider myself to be tech savvy-ish. And um, as a digital archivist, um, I wonder where I can store these recordings in a way that We'll keep them safe. Yeah. Um, so, but we'll get there. And thank you for your offer to help. I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, please do. Please do. And about publishing them for whomever yeah. is is okay with, you know, there's always YouTube, um, mm-hmm. but you know who's okay with it and um, right. and that kind of thing. Right. Um, yeah. Out of curiosity, so you, you're a couple of years older than me, so you may not know these names, yeah. but I hung out with some folks from New Milford. Um, so I'm wondering if you know Steve Ashley, who's a brother, friend of your brothers, um, Cheryl Kennan, uh, Tanya Wallace, um, what the heck is his name? It's not slipping me at the moment. Uh, Yeah, there's also someone named Monet who lives up here now, which is kind of weird. And huh. uh, Kathleen Holton lives up here as well, but both from, from New Milford. And I, huh. I just, you know, I, I think they're probably like three years younger than you, which is like an ice age in comparison. <laughs> it is. You know what I mean? That's why, that's um, probably why we never spoke as well, because you were, yep. you know, you were older. So like, obviously that's verboten, uh, which doesn't make sense, <laughs> but that's how that is, you know? It didn't feel verboten to me back then, but like with school, I just didn't, because I wasn't in classes with people who were younger than me, I never met them. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. With my brother, Paul, um, he was really good friends with a guy named Chris Fleming, who I oh, think yeah. you know as well. Yeah. Um, and he and Chris 
did this amazing thing. They started, um, they rented out a storage space. I don't know how they figured this out um, and put a bunch of recording and um, equipment in there, like synthesizer modules, speakers, wow. guitars, yeah. like you name it. And they were using it as a recording studio. Wow. And they started making <laughs> industrial music. Um, wow, really? And I was in college at the time at Hofstra University. Mm -hmm. Terrible experience. Um, Sorry. <laughs> but um, <laughs> long, long ago now. Um, yeah. But when they, they eventually moved to Brooklyn and kept that studio going. Um, and they moved in with a guy named Will Quinnell, who was also from New Milford. And both Chris and Will were, were younger than me, but I met them because of Paul um, yeah. and because I was somewhat their neighbor and could go by every once in a while and see all this weird shit that they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Fleming made some amazing um, electronica, I'll call it. It was very Aphex twin sounding. Oh, wow. Cool. So cool. good. Um, mm -hmm. And they were doing industrial music as well and then and then that just that stopped after a while yeah. um i haven't been in touch with chris for a while but um cool. so yeah um but yeah everyone else who is younger than me i just i i wound up moving to long island and then new york city and for the same reason as you i stopped going to what was boardwalk at the time it just yeah. wasn't um, it didn't have the same feeling. I think it was too yeah. lit. Yeah. There was, too, yeah. maybe the owners realized that all the kids were doing drugs on the roof and in the storage rooms and having sex in all those places. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I can't imagine what they had to clean up. Um, oh, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, Boardwalk was just not as interesting. Um, and I remember, I don't remember who said it, um, but someone who was, I think she was a little bit older. It was a woman, a little bit older than me. She was there and like it images the end of the night. Um, what was the song that all the DJs would play at the end of the night to get everyone off the dance floor? Um, it was like Barry Manilow, I think. Do you remember no, this? No, um, no. I'm sure Jeff but, McKay does. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, you know, th like part of their regular playlist was um, various songs by Blondie. Mm -hmm. Like they'd go mm -hmm. into that era oh. every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, someone who had gone to Boardwalk, who was older than, than us, um, said that they were at Boardwalk one day and they played Blondie as the last song of the night to get everyone off the dance floor. And I was just like, oh, I'm not going back. <laughs> it's like, that's it. It isn't punk anymore. Yeah. No, nope. it's not the same. Not the same. Yeah. So, huh. yeah, that was that, that was, was my end. that was my. Yeah. But it just wasn't yeah. around. Um, and I think that's why I lost the opportunity to meet other people who were coming in after I had started. Yeah. Um, right. That and I was also very shy. Like I didn't meet very many people back then. Um, wound up in many cars going to people's houses for gatherings and I don't remember who they were yeah, um, yeah. so a strange world. Yeah. I'm surprised nobody got hurt you know as far as I know I'll, I'm willing to bet that some people did we just didn't know about it um, yeah. yeah but yeah I don't remember a few instances of people taking a little bit too much drugs but they were okay in the end yeah um, but yeah. <laughs> Crazy time, you know? Crazy time indeed. Yeah. Be wonderful though. So yeah, should I stop the recording? What do you think? Yeah, I think so, unless you have anything else. I can't really think of anything now. Uh, but like I said, I'm sure 2 a.m. tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna have an epiphany. Feel free to either like record yourself or send me, just send me an email, just type it out, whatever's more comfortable. Sure for you because you know any kind of reminiscence is great um yep. oh i do have well, one more question did you go to any of the reunions that took place no i, I, meant, to I, look up the, I meant to look up the dates and i didn't um before now but um when myspace became big 
that's mm -hmm. when I started to reconnect with everyone from images and Krypton yeah. and Ivy, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I met a whole bunch of people who I hadn't met before. Um, I'm forgetting her last name, but wait, I think it's Vicky Kusan Kuzami. I'm, it sounds like she's Japanese. She's not, um, <laughs> I'll have to look up her name, but, um, I, she ran it, but there were a whole bunch of people, um, helping her put together reunions that took place partially in Connecticut and partially in New York city. And um, I'm sorry you weren't there. That's really, I guess maybe yeah. you didn't find us on MySpace, um, but it was two years in a row. We had two nights each year and about 200 people came to the large events wow. in New York City. And it was just um, proof of the positive experiences we all had back in high yeah. school, um, yeah, yeah. how much we helped each other back then and how much that was necessary. Yeah. Um, and to think about all those people, if they were just isolated, you know, solitary, or let's say in a group of five in some school somewhere, you know, each scattered around, the the all of our lives would have been totally different, you know, yeah. not having that wealth of community and, uh, you know, understanding that there's more than just me, yeah, uh, more than just our little crew, yeah, yeah. We were really lucky, really, really we lucky, because we you know, were. if I was stuck up in Vermont, it would have been a totally different thing. You know? <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Hmm. Cool. All right, Rob. Doing this, I appreciate it. Oh sure, I'm so excited. Thank you for for being my my test subject. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> the first pleasure. interview I'm doing, um, hopefully of hundreds, um, and um, this has been a great experience for me, and I'm I'm excited about doing more, and um, when other people see this recording, it will hopefully, you know, like I mentioned to you when I was telling you about this, it's sometimes hard to convince people to record themselves and their experiences. They get a little nervous. Um, so hopefully this recording will re relax people a little bit for anyone who might yeah. be concerned. Yeah, totally. And, okay. you know, like I said, if I can help in some way, I mean, okay. we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Stopping the recording.